Nice to have you with us.
by some secret society. <laughs> Myers stars as eight different characters in the series he created and wrote. Not tonight, dear. I've got a headache. I was watching the first few episodes and thinking, my God, that looks like a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work. You know what I mean? How did you approach what is really a big project? Well, I had a lot of help. Producers were fantastic. A lot of storyboarding. Yeah. Lots of rehearsals. I told you the Pentapper is real. You're a reporter. You've got to do an expose on them. My brother was my uh, stunt double. So sometimes when I'm with somebody, but somebody said, that's my brother Paul. Is that right? True fans may remember the first mention of the Pentaverix in Meyer's 1993 film, So I Married an Axe Murderer. Well, if the well-known facts in each other, there's a secret society of the five wealthiest people in the world, not as the Pentaverix. Mm. The seed was planted back then, so this has clearly been kicking around your mind. And, and it was, uh, you know, 20 years before that, so... Uh, really? I have always been obsessed with secret organizations. Well, it's a fantasy for me, you know, we always talked about secret organizations being bad people and being nefarious. You know, I grew up in government housing and went to a public school and took public transport. My school had a pool, a gym, an ice rink, and a million dollar television studio. So for me, the secret organization that is the Pentaver is really the Canadian government. <laughs> which is, it's a secret organization that's benevolent. You know what I mean? This country's been so fantastic to me. And uh, I, I'm a citizen of the United States and England and Canada. I'm an international man of mystery. <laughs> oh, start. Um, we got one, guys. We yes, one. there you go. <laughs> All right, there. Fuck the kids. Born and raised in a working class neighborhood outside of Toronto by supportive British parents who immigrated to Canada from Liverpool, Myers grew up loving comedy, but he never dreamed he could make a life of it. My dad sold encyclopedias, my mom worked in the office in the factory. I never thought anything was going to happen. I actually did say to my parents I wanted to be an architect. And my dad said, oh, why would you want to do that fool? And my mom says, don't do that, be an actor. <laughs> they were like, you know, they, why would you want to be an actor? That's what my dad's whole thing is. Myers began to cultivate some of his most famous characters while playing with comedy troops in London. Toronto and Chicago. In 1988, he got a call from legendary Saturday Night Live creator Lauren Michaels to join the cast of the show he grew up watching and studying. On this show, we talk about coffee, New York, door to door. You know, no big what to do. Did you ever settle in at SNL to a comfort zone with some of those characters took off with Wayne's World or the Richmond or no. Peter? You never were no. totally comfortable. No. No, I enjoyed doing them. Lauren is being nothing but fantastic to me. Uh, it sounds like it's anti-Lauren, not at all. Lauren is a tough coach. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I've always benefited from tough coaches. I didn't think Saturday Night Live was going to be around for me to be on it. I didn't think I would be on the show. I didn't think I would do well on the show. I, I now see that I did okay on the show. I thought I'd be fired every week. Lauren, I'm from New York! It's Saturday Night Live! Myers' breakout SNL sketch, Wayne's World, spun off two hit movies Hi, and introduced a new generation to a six-minute song <laughs> by Queen. Wayne's World was me growing up in Scarborough, Ontario. Axe Murderer was every Scottish family in Canada and a little bit my dad. You know, everything had to be personal. Everything is autobiographical. Even that international man of mystery. I thought you would have to have grown up in my house to get it. You know, James Bond was massive in our house, you know. Scottish but British, British, you know, culture. I think my mom used to say all her favorite characters are happy survivors. Austin Powers. Yeah, baby. Yeah. And its blockbuster sequels. Get in my belly! Together became one of the most quoted. One million dollars. And successful comedy franchises in Hollywood history. My mom gave me some great advice. She had said, don't forget that the, the villain is the hero of his own story. I was a big influence on Dr. Evil. 
And she said, the essence of a hero is plasticity, the ability to change. The essence of a villain is being steadfast. That's pretty serious eternal wisdom right there. Yeah. No, I won't be clapped. <laughs> it would be, hey. Ogres are like onions. End of story. Do you still have moments, Mike, where you say, you know, I can't believe what's happened in my yeah, life? Every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Every day. It's fantastic. I, it's beyond anything. And I think it's seeing it still in the culture is unbelievably satisfying. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's mind blowing. You know? The Pentaveret is streaming now on Netflix. Our big thanks to the truly spectacular Peak Restaurant and Edge at Hudson Yards for hosting our conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full interview with Mike Myers, including some cryptic hints about the future, perhaps, of Austin Powers. You can find that on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. And next week, a new Sunday sit-down with John Hamm about the boyhood dream of starring in the highly anticipated new Top Gun movie alongside Tom Cruise and the legacy of Don Draper and Mad Men. And then John Hamm, next week on Sunday Today. I'm the master